Oh, ladies and germs, welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another edition of Jury Saturday. My name is Justin Robert Young. I put the jury in jury, and you are joining us today. It is October 27th. We are under two weeks, but a week and a half away from yet another American presidential election. Huh. Jesus. Uh, and this is, by the way, a race, and we, we've talked about, listen, I've been doing this show for... God, I don't even know when I started doing the show, but it was far earlier in the um, in the process. And, uh, you know, it, it's gotten, in the parlance of Bad Boys 2, shit got real. Uh, we now have an extraordinarily interesting race. And one that, you know, we've always kind of said, it's going to be close, it's going to be close, it's going to be close. We always say that. That's always what people say. And usually about this point, if it's not going to be close, everybody kind of starts giving up the ghost. Like, okay, yeah, it's going to take a big change. So you're waiting for a big change to happen. That's not really the case now. You know, we, we are, we're on a collision course for an incredibly close election no matter what. So, uh, yeah, shit has gone down in clay class. And uh, anything that has kind of stopped, shitting, shit, <laughs> stopped the clay class shitting, which is a big problem and an issue, um... You know, it's it's not happened. We're on a collision course, my friends. This is going to be incredibly close, and incredibly close elections mean contested elections. I say there's a 50-50 shot that this thing doesn't end on election night. Now, speaking of election night, I need your guys' help uh, with uh, something that I'm going to be doing for the Twit Network. I'm going to be providing live, being part of their live election coverage team, uh, headed up by... Um, Tom Merritt, Sarah Lane. Uh, I don't know if Ayaz is, is part of it. I think he might. Um, I will not be at the Brick House. I was, I was going to be at the Brick House. Uh, instead, there was kind of a, a happy accident, and I will now be live from Skype from a contested county in a swing state. I will be live from, from Orange County, and uh, I might even go down to one of the more contested counties, uh, down to, I think, like Osceola County or, or Pinellas County down in, in Tampa. So I think uh, I'll be live on location, which will be pretty sweet. Uh, but what I told them, because, I mean, it's very easy for me to go on a show like that and just uh, just make jokes, just make a lot of, you know, like, hey... Binders full of women, boom, 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 or like, you know, hey, 2002 called, they want their community organizer back, like, um, you know, it's very easy for me to do that, um, but I, I kind of wanted to bring something, something cool, something awesome to it, so what I pitched to Tom, and Tom was, uh, was, was, was receptive to, is I want to do, I want to pull back the curtain a little bit, every major news outlet that you're going to be watching CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, ABC, yada, 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 CBS. They will all be doing what I'm going to show you guys how to do, which is to basically just uh, look, uh, look for, um, or, or sorry, every single site has a, uh, every single county has a website where they announce the election results as they come out. That's what everybody's watching. So when you see the big fancy CNN graphic that's like, <laughs> CNN is now reporting that uh, blah, blah, blah is going for blah, blah, blah. Part of that is sources they have inside the people that are counting uh, you know, the votes. But most of that is them just watching these websites and reporting it as fact. I'm going to show you guys how to do that. And what I need your guys' help is to help me find those websites. So specifically, there are probably three counties that I want to focus on like three counties in like four states. So let's say three counties in Florida, three counties in Virginia, three counties in Ohio, and three counties in Pennsylvania. Um, because those 
Virginia is going to be the first thing that tells us the story. Right now, it looks like it's leaning Romney. Um, so, you know, that will be that will be very key. That's one of the states that he needs. Um, you know, Florida is another gigantic one uh, that he that he absolutely needs. But, you know, there's. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, so if you would like to help me and you would like to be part of the big twit coverage, then uh, just go ahead and send me an email, justinrobertyoung at gmail dot com, uh, and uh, we will uh, we will we will figure that out. But basically, we just need three counties in each state, and we need the sites. And uh, if you want to help me out on election night, and basically just watch three sites, and then just let me know when they update, just kind of do the the refresh game, and then just let me know when they update. I'll be butting in live to twit coverage and i will give the updates as they happen and we'll be able to show everybody what we're doing so be part of jury coverage this uh this election day tuesday and we will see how things are going down now atomic child says in the chat room this site is great for stats on the election it's the 538 blog on the new york times um this has been Oops, check. Can you guys hear me? Um, this has been uh, a, a very popular blog, this go around, uh, and really has been as uh, the Romney surge has happened, it has been a popular place for Obama supporters to point to and say, uh, you know, this is still statistically uh, Obama's election to lose. Um, I, I don't necessarily want to ascribe a political motivation to Nate Silver specifically, because I do think he is a man about the numbers. Uh, however, I don't think it's debatable to say that it has been a very popular place to point as data has seemed to shift closer to or or it has been more exciting to Mitt Romney supporters. Here's what I wonder about. And this is something that I don't know. And the more I've read Nate Silver's blog, I don't know if he has really, for me as a reader, provided an answer. Here's my question. 2008, as was very well documented, and this was something that was a, a point of pride for the Obama campaign was a very different statistical election than previous elections in two areas very specifically. Minority voting, young voting. Okay? These were two elements that were a, a, a statistical anomaly. Now, the question is, four years later, with Obama polling the way he is, Will uh, they continue to uh, vote in that high uh, of, of rating? And when these polls are being conducted and they are using the 2008 demographics as probable ways to weight things, which, I mean, and we talked about this thing the last time that I did a live stream. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, Bob McBob says... Uh, Every time I hear Nate Silver, I picture Nate Dog. <laughs> 18 in the clip and one in the hold. Nate Silver about to make some bodies turn cold. Bunch turning and yelling was a tad bit late. Nate Silver warned G had to regulate. Doing political calculus. Um, Mount of absentee voters. Mount of. It was a clear black night, a clear white moon. Um, so, uh, I mean, I, and this is a, a question. I, I genuinely have, uh, I, I genuinely just have a question on some of the uh, some of the polls that are that are coming in that use last the last presidential election as a a baseline for representing. Like the likely voter composition of 
each state. Because I think there is a, a argument to be made that there would be a regression to the mean. That's, uh, you know, I don't think that, that, that statistically, that's crazy to say. You know, and it's hard to make these arguments because, you know, I hear right here, Renegade Mike 23. Okay, jury, we know you want to throw cold water on the Obama love. Number one, uh, I don't want to throw cold water on anything. You know, I just, you know, I have I have a, a question uh, about it. You know, I don't think it's statistically what happens is that outliers regress to the mean. That's what happens. Uh, call me DJM, but Justin, if what you're asking were the case, wouldn't the stats have already come out about it by now? Well, I don't know how you know. I mean, I think this is, I'm not saying that this is bias. I think it's an unknowable. We don't know how many people in overrepresentative uh, demographics that voted, I said not, no, not overrepresented, uh, that outperformed what they normally do statistically, young voters, Minority voters. We don't know, or uh, Republicans who stayed home, or, uh, you know, there was, I mean, there was a, a tremendously depressed Republican and conservative voter show out in 2008 because they hated McCain. They hated McCain, and then it looked like he was going to get his shit kicked in, and he did. You know, so there was a lot of Republicans that stayed home. There were a lot of young people and minorities that did vote. I mean, th these are things that, that we know. We know when we, we, when we do the, the, the autopsy for the 2008 election that these things happen. Now, what will be the case in a week and a half? We don't know. We know that the, that the things that happened in 2008 were, were greater statistically than they normally are. Where does that come? Does it stay? Do, do young voters and, and minorities continue to vote in as high a level, and if it's not as high, is it less high? And is that less high enough to skew certain polls, especially when the polls are this close? I, I just, I don't know. And I'm not saying that you should know, and I'm not saying that it's biased, and I'm not saying that these are, uh, you know, crazy things to talk about. I'm just saying that it, it's a question for me looking at things. Uh... Call me DJM. I'm, a, I'm asking that wouldn't the various polls that go on from day to day have already shown a change from 2008 to now if they really were the case? Here's, my, here's what I'm saying, is that when you do polling, you don't talk to everybody. You talk to a certain amount of people, and then you try, uh, and basically the people that you talk to, you try to get a representative amount of what you think the likely electorate to be. That's what I'm saying. And so the methodology behind what you think that likely electorate is, is tremendously tricky to do. And it's tremendous, tremendously tricky to do in this election specifically because we had such a different election in 2008. So, that's all I'm saying. That is all I'm saying. Now, to the strategy element of it, okay? And this is where... Um, this is where uh, people, if, if you want to say, uh, if, if, if you want to say, Justin, you are throwing cold water on the Obama love, then yes, this is where I am, I am taking uh, a, a gigantic Gatorade cooler. This is like, if Obama love were a Super Bowl winning coach, I'm going to run over and dump a cooler of, of ice cold Gatorade on top of it. Because I believe that what we are watching is no matter what we are looking at in the polls that we are looking at, I believe we are looking at a very, very, very anxious, if not panicked, campaign from our president of the United States. And here's why. I don't think the message of trust is something that winning candidates talk about. I've said before on this live stream that politics is not about who's right. Politics is about who tells the more compelling truth. Accuracy is certainly a part of it. But as we saw in 2008, we had, it, was, it was a great version of the truth. Hope and change. 
post-party. Um, we, I, I don't think that people at this stage, uh, you know, are, are, are compelled by the other guys lying because everybody's lying. We went through three debates where literally everything that was said was you're lying. You know, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, so here we go. Let me, here we go. Renegade Mike 23. I'm a volunteer captain for Obama, and we have been saying from the start that the race is going to be tight, jury, so there's no newsflash there. I don't think so either. I think we always say that, that it's going to be tight, and I, I believe that especially for volunteer captains, you need to be living on the edge because you need to be getting everybody out to vote that you possibly can. That's how you win elections. You win elections not with ideas. You do not win elections with speeches. You do not win elections with policy points. You win elections by getting people into a booth to top press the button on your name. You win elections by having... Here we go. Where is it? Where is it? Where am I here? Uh, 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 uh. Here we go. Here's how you win elections. You win elections, let's get it on camera, by having voters in swing states like Florida fill out your name, one there or one there. That's how you win elections. So, you, that means you get people to the polls, you educate the people that you believe will be swayed by your arguments, and you make sure that they are passionate and tell their friends. Now, Uh, so, uh, I don't know where I was. Um, <laughs> apparently we have somebody here from Uruguay. Uh, cheers to you, ma'am. The first black president was a huge motivator for everybody. Uh, and, and that is, that was, it was a very, very big thing, especially because the narrative that was created, it was great. It was probably, you know, uh, the it was it was a virtuoso performance, you know, by by that team, and it was a, a complete botch by by McCain. Now, where were we? Uh, I don't believe that trust is is the way that we are looking at it, and let me just let me just. Flip the tables, okay? Let's say Romney was leading with a slim yet consistent margin up into the first debates. Let's say he completely falls asleep during the first debate, changes the dynamic of the race. All of a sudden, now it is like literally a dead heat and uh, it is absolutely down to like one state. Like it is right now with Ohio. It's the exact same situation, except Obama is charging and Romney is receding. If there was a story, and I'm not saying it's true, I'm not saying it's right, I'm just saying if there was a story that had Romney calling Obama a bullshitter, I believe that the narrative we would talk about is that Romney was dissolving. He was cracking under the pressure that he could not handle the person coming up behind him, which really, who can? <laughs> and he was, he was not dealing with it well. And it was affecting the way people perceived him. I don't think that that's a crazy thought to have. I really, really don't. And I really don't think that people would, you know, look at that and just kind of give it a, give it, give it a, meh, okay. Now, do I think that that would be overblown? Absolutely. Absolutely. That would be a hyperventilating 12-hour media cycle looking to jerk off over every little thing. However... Is there a little bit of truth to it? 
Possibly. Possibly at some point there's a lot of smoke and fire. Remember 2008. Remember 2008. We, uh, you know, the, the right-wing media and uh, people were, were freaking the fuck out because Obama had said the whole lip, you know, uh, lipstick on a pig. Ever remember lipstick on a pig? If you guys don't remember, Sarah Palin came out during the Republican National Convention. During her speech, she had, uh, you know, what's the difference between a hockey mom and a pit bull? Lipstick. Hilarious joke for fucking idiots who go to the goddamn Republican National Convention. And I'm not saying that only idiots go to the Republican National Convention. I think you're weird if you go to any political rally, let alone a convention. And you're not getting paid. Let me add that caveat. Um... A little, uh, two weeks later, Obama made this joke about uh, talking about the policies of, of McCain and Palin. And uh, I believe, I'm going, to, I'm going to, to, to guess here, and somebody can, can correct me in the chat room if, if I'm wrong. Uh, I believe he was saying, that what Obama was, was saying was that the metaphorical pig were the policies of the Bush administration, and you can't just put lipstick on a pig and not call it a pig. Um, everybody freaked out. And I think it was overblown. It was very, very, very overblown. Uh, but it was seized upon by the McCain, uh, by the McCain campaign, and they tried to drive it home. It was stupid. It was retarded. It was really, 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 really dumb. It didn't really say anything about the narrative that they wanted to hammer home. They tried to take a little, 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 maybe a little gaffe. Maybe he was trying to poke fun of, fun of Palin. Just a little bit. But it's a minor gaffe. It's an extraordinarily minor gaffe, and they tried to blow it up. And ultimately, it didn't work, because he got his ass waxed. Which, by the way, you want to fucking lose a boner really quick. Imagine John McCain getting his ass waxed. That's... Uh, you'd make a face like this. Um, so. Look at that. Remember that. Then. Look at... I mean, binders full of women, eh, I kind of see the same thing. I, I, I kind of think that like this binders full of women shit, the, the bayonets and horses thing, like, these are minor. These are very, very, very small. The 47% secret tape was not small. That was big. But the binders full of women stuff, like... It doesn't even really make a whole lot of sense. And you got Joe Biden running around with fucking binders and shit. You know, and so Call Me DJM says, totally minor and the right wing will do everything they can to manufacture outrage about it. But my point is, it goes to both parties. Because I do believe that the, I believe that Big Bird's a fucking minor thing. I think binders full of women is a minor thing. Now, do they have their place in an election, yeah, no, you, you mention them, you talk about them, but when you make them official messaging points, when you make them official messaging points, and you're out on the road, and you're talking about them, I, I don't think they help. I think they hurt. You're taking time away. And you saw this in action, because Obama came out today with his, or, sorry, this week, with his booklet. Booklet of the, the uh, pathway to economic patriotism um you know what does that say what are they trying to say the obama campaign is trying to say okay we believe there's a problem that people don't think we have a plan for the second term all we've done is attack romney we've told you why he isn't a good president wouldn't be a good president we have not talked enough about what we would do. Okay? So he comes out today, with, or this week, with a book about what he's going to do. 
Now, if you think that's a good strategy, and I believe most Obama supporters do, they would look to that and say, look, this guy's got a plan. Romney didn't have a plan. <laughs> Jackie Hearn says, I'm so lonely, I'd love to be in a binder. Who would? Um, although that does sound like a, like a site. I don't know if you'd really want to be. There's, there's some kink site out there that's doing a binders full of women joke, and I don't know if, if you want to know where all three of those rings are going. <laughs> Um, by the way, uh, Rossi S SSG in the, uh, in, in, in the chat room right now is, is running around like a Brazilian soccer fan during, uh, any other soccer match. She's just running around yelling Southern, Central and, and South American country names, and it's getting hilarious. Um, now... <laughs> If you believe that what he did this week was good, was that it drew a, con drew a contrast between him and Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney has a plan full of holes, and the math doesn't add up. I've got a plan that's good for America and is good for the middle class, and this is fantastic. And look, it's in a book. You can read it. It's got text. Romney ain't got books. The fuck is he going to do? Tell you words? Words are wind. Motherfucker, I read Game of Thrones. You want to know what Game of Thrones was? A motherfucking book. Oh, shit. Obama's Game of Thrones. And Mitt Romney is fucking someone else. He's not even a book. He fucking, you can't let Mitt Romney in a library. That shit ain't real. Fuck. Real talk. Obama, Game of Thrones. I don't know whether that's officially a thing. Um, if you believe that that was a good idea... He should have been doing this weeks ago. He should have been doing this before he was wasting time with fucking Big Bird. Before he was wasting time with fucking binders full of women. The problem with this coming after all that is that it seems like it's just a new thing every week. Um, so... Oh, let's read what you guys are saying. Obama wants there to be more middle class or rich, just everybody needing the government. Uh, that's how they keep printing money like fools. fools. This is from Rectal Exam. Uh, <laughs> of course, Jackie Hearn, who longs to be in a binder. Uh, Renegade Mike, a Obama volunteer captain, says, I agree that the Obama big bird... Uh, thing was it was a distraction. Um, okay, Renegade Mike twenty three. Okay, Jerry, trash Romney for once. If you really know what you're talking about, that Obama isn't the only one fucking up. Oh, I believe very much so that uh, well, Romney did himself no favors uh, throughout throughout this, and, and and he really he almost completely uh, botched his shit with uh, the Libya thing. Because I think there's more, there's more to this Libya thing than people want, than, than we have yet to hear. It is an unfolding story. And I think he, he definitely jumped out too far on that. He left himself politically open for it. Uh, I believe that he has done a fairly uh, inconsistent job in terms of uh, providing, again, his own compelling truth. For the majority of this race, it has just been about Obama's not working, Obama's not working, Obama's not working. I don't think he did a great job at selling himself as a personality. I believe he let himself get defined. He let himself be looked at as a soulless plutocrat. And this is a reason why, when he had a very energetic, very compelling performance at the first debate, all of a sudden you saw a, a big cross in the polls. Because he had a lot of people that weren't exactly thrilled with Obama. Uh, and they realized that he wasn't going to eat a animal. He wasn't going to eat a fucking, you know, a baby on stage. Uh, Renegade Mike says fairly. Okay, sorry. I, I, I don't know if I have been, uh, uh, what's it called? If my adjectives are, are not strong enough. Am I, are they adverbs? Adverbs, modifying. Um, 
Okay, here's the thing. Renegade Mike 23. He's been completely inconsistent. Yes! He's a politician. This is what they do. Politicians are completely inconsistent. Good politicians have opinions that are evolving. Huh? I was against gay marriage. Now my opinion has evolved, and I'm for it. I'm a learned man. I let the evidence dictate what I do believe and how I will govern. Evolving. Shitty politicians flip-flop. I thought one thing, I'm a callow idiot, and now I'm going to say something else. So, uh, okay, Ollie Mall. Can we just all vote for Gary Johnson and call it a day? I have a lot of friends that are libertarian. I would consider myself more in some sensibilities, um, you know, in some sensibilities, I would probably lean more libertarian. I'm not a fan of the, uh, the libertarian party in specific. I don't think that if we elected a libertarian tomorrow that we would be a better country. I think we would be a worse country. I, I think that there are good, very, very good ideals, but I just I don't believe in just all of a sudden shutting down everything. And also, there's an element of the of the libertarian party that I find too isolationist. And for my taste. That being said, Gary Johnson is running for president as uh, the libertarian candidate. There was a story today that Gary Johnson's campaign is in massive debt. For a party that, above all else, preaches fiscal responsibility, how are we comfortable as libertarian voters voting for somebody who can't balance the budget and outspends his means on his own campaign? I don't know. I don't know. Because what we would think is that this guy, all right, above all the Dan and the bullshit, uh, he's going to be able to, you know, uh, balance the budget, not spend money on shit we don't need. Uh, it, call me DJM. Well, Jerry, that's the whole third party is getting screwed in the media thing. Uh, well, you know, is that going to change? Like, yeah, the media is not fair, okay? Like, it, it, this isn't, you don't get a media ticket and you get X amount of time. Like, you create a compelling candidacy or you don't. Like, so, yeah, it's hard to be a third party candidate, but we've seen in the last 25 years somebody completely directly affected election. Ross Perot fucking probably got Bill Clinton elected. Now, I don't think it's totally fair, because I think that a lot of people voted for Ross Perot because they didn't like George H.W. Bush, and that would probably have uh, counted for people staying home as much as they were going to vote for him. Um, but, like, he did it. He got out in front of people. He talked, you know, he, he, he got his message out. Now, is it easy to do without money? No. It's hard. It's very hard. But at the same time, being the president is the hardest fucking job on the planet. It's at least the most pressure packed. So, if you can't figure out these problems, and these are massive problems, these are hard problems, if you can't figure out these problems, including if you can't get, let's say... 2,000 people to donate fucking shit tons of money. Millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of daughter, dollars. Not daughters. Not their... I don't know. That would be a really weird election. If there's like, I'm donating my daughter to your campaign. Okay. I have a binder for her. Please, proceed to the left. Um, if... If you can't solve these problems, what faith do we have in you to solve the harder problems once you're in office? I mean, 
I think that, that that's valid. I think it's it's not crazy to say that you should that, that these things matter. I I just I refuse to believe that you know if you can't raise enough money to run for president, then maybe you shouldn't be president. Maybe you're not persuasive enough. Maybe you don't have the brass balls to walk in and and talk to somebody and get the money out of them. You know. Um, call me DJM. Rest my I rest my case. Both Jill, Jill Stein and Gary Johnson are on the balance in nearly every damn state, but they can't get on the TV debates. That's because they're going to draw 0.2% of the electorate. You know, like, will it better the country? Uh, call me DJ, but Ross Pro shoveled his own money into it. Uh, that's one way to do it. That's one way to uh, to solve the problem. I'm not saying that there is only one way to solve it. I'm saying solve it. I'm saying if you can't solve the problem, then how are you going to solve Russia? Are you going to solve you know national security? How are you going to solve the economy? You know, I just, I don't think they're unrelated. I think you either solve problems or you don't. And for a lot of people, they can't think outside the the Republican Democrat thing. Now, um, where are we? Let's go ahead and take a look. I've been obsessed with real clear politics lately. I've been doing nothing but reading uh, every column that they post on there, both for and against either candidate. Um, You've continued to see national polls trend toward Romney. But let's be real here. Let's be really, 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 really real here. This election is save the cheerleader, save the world. The cheerleader is Ohio. The candidate that wins Ohio is probably going to win the election. Right now, Obama's ahead by 4 to 5%. Let's see, where does real clear politics have him? Uh, Obama, by aggregate, they have him up plus 2.3 in Ohio. Um... You know, <laughs> it's going to be a squeaker. It's going to be fucking, it's going to be a big fucking deal, man. It's going to be awesome. I'm very excited. Very, very, very excited for it. It's going to come down to the wire. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know who's going to win. But, uh, yeah, rectal exam said uh, it, on, on Real Clear Politics, their electoral map has 201 to 191. Uh, but I don't know why they took the reason why because they had Romney up before. They um, they took North Carolina from here we go. The electoral map. They took North Carolina from a lean Romney to toss up. There we go. Yeah. I guess because it it barely fell. Their their line for toss up and lean is a full percentage point. So their aggregate fell to 0.9 as opposed to 1, and so they brought North Carolina from Lean's Romney and giving him those electoral votes which had him ahead. Uh, at 206 to 201, back down to uh, to 191, the 201. So we will see. Uh, Mikkel do you think it might be so close that there is confusion, outrage, and, uh, and the possible lack of uh, overt clarity in the final result? Yes. Yes. I do believe so. 
I don't think that we're done on election night. Uh, I believe that this is going to be there's going to be lawyers involved. There's going to be recounts. I think it's going to get ugly. Ugly. Um, 2000 ugly? I hope so. 2000 was the best. 2000 happened in my backyard. It was fucking awesome. Uh, Renegade Mike, our, our volunteer captain for Obama 2012, says he's in North Carolina and says uh, that the reason why he is trending and polling worse is because Romney left North Carolina two weeks ago and now has no ground game. Or ground game? Ground game? Ground game. Um, well, you know, then it's going to be, it's going to be tight because he needs North Carolina and that's been considered a safe state for him. So, uh, if he does not have that, then, you know, shit's way fucked. Let me ask you this though. Renegade Mike 23. And this is where the politics talk will end. But I want to ask our volunteer captain is watching us today. And thank you very, very much for coming in and, and, and watching, uh, Renegade. Because I do, I do love people who are involved like that. Um, do you get a sense, and be honest, honest here, do you get a sense that, you, that the, the team around you is more confident now that your candidate will be reelected than you were before the first debates? Would you say that there is a net positive or negative? Now, anxiety grows throughout a campaign, especially as you get closer to, a, to the uh, election, and we always knew it was going to be close. But be honest and say, has your confidence gone up or down? Uh, while we wait, uh, MKO Pelk is becoming quite a trend in global politics. Seriously close results, more often than not, resu resulting in hung parliaments or minority governments, which create an entire form of con affected instability a mainstream media cannot handle. Um, Mike the Luxab says, how about letters to Republican voters in Florida saying they're not able to vote because of citizenship, citizenship issues? Listen, folks, it's a big prize. It's a big prize. A very big prize. A big prize that a lot of people spend a lot of money on. If you don't think that there are people around it that will fucking do anything to sway it, legal or otherwise, then you're kidding yourself. Both sides. Uh, Bob McBob says, the first debate, I thought Obama didn't attack, but didn't do as bad as they said. The other two debates were good, not great. Overall, I am happy, but worried for Obama. And Renegade Mike, who we asked for, said, no, no real change, but... If I had to decide, it went up a little, but not by much. Well, that is very, very good because you are the guy on the front lines. So you should have your confidence go up. You need your confidence to go up if you if 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 the, if the Obama machine is going to turn out votes. So I should certainly hope that your that your confidence uh, has has gone up, and it should be at an all time fever pitch by November six. So you know. Cheers to you. It's going to be it's going to be one hell of a ride. Now, uh, what else do I want to talk about? All right, how about a segue? We uh, saw this week a Obama ad from Lena Dunham of the show Girls on HBO. I watched all of the first season of Girls in the last week. How did I watch it? Well, um, I have HBO Go now. And don't ask how I got it, because I'm not going to fucking tell you. Get out of my face with these questions. Uh, it, is, it is really kind of a very odd, uh, it's, it's, it's an odd show. It's a very silly show. Uh, and if anything, you know, there's, there's really like, there's a great clarity of voice uh, to, to her writing. Um <laughs> RG Manifesto. I'm picturing you in a clockwork orange setup being forced to watch girls. I actually don't. I mean, listen, like it's a very it's a very funny show. And and really, it's like, you know, I've known a lot of known a lot of anxious women in my life. And this is just a great catalog of all the different kinds of strains of cripplingly anxious women that exist in the world. It's pretty amazing. Uh, 
but I would highly recommend it. It is it is very very good. I don't know when the second season is going to debut. Probably sometime soon. So I would I would encourage everybody to go uh, to go check it out. But Lena Dunham, man, her tits out a lot, out in a in a big way, in in just constantly, just titty 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 titty, and they're not like, it's not like they're crazy, like they're awesome, you know, like. But I think that's the point. I hope that this thing doesn't happen though, um, where. Sometimes people who look weird on television feel trapped by the fact that they've become popular when they look weird. We've seen this time and time again. Jonah Hill wound up getting skinny despite the fact that he had tremendous anxiety and he talked about it, that he was beloved as the fat guy. But of course, being the fat guy isn't necessarily healthy. And it makes people feel bad about themselves. <coughs> Chris Farley had uh, huge issues with that. Jim Belushi. Part of Lena Dunham's character is that she looks kind of weird. Kind of weird. I wonder if that's going to continue to happen. I don't know. I don't know if by the end we next see her, she will be skinnier. Uh, but we will find out. In the meantime, check out, girls. I think that there's a dog trying to open up my door. No. It's a Brett. Hello! I'll tell you what. I'm live here. Look, I'm getting a cake, a cake delivered. The, I don't even make cakes. No! It's just for you. That's amazing. Hello, how are you? Doing all right. Good to how see you? you. That is a fantastic jacket. I know, I know. Wow, listen, ladies and gentlemen. Here is <laughs> a cake delivered for the live stream. This is amazing. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. I'm Come on, sit down. Here, let me uh, <laughs> sit down. We'll, we'll interview you here on the live stream. I don't know how I feel about this. Not right. too bad. You're, gonna, you're, gonna, you're, you're, not, you're on live stream constantly, aren't you? You're doing like drunk spelling bees and stuff like that? Um, maybe, yes. Come on, scoot up so you can, you can right. talk into the microphone. Uh, for, to introduce yourself to everybody watching here live. Hi, everyone. I'm Kristen. I'm the Russian on Twitter. And longtime NSFW uh, chat realmer. Yeah, right? yeah. When I can catch the show, yeah. I'm not nerding. Okay. Now, uh, you you are here in Oakland for a uh, costume party. For a costume party. Mm -hmm. And who are you going to be uh, at this uh, costume party? Hunter S. Thompson. Really? Yes. Now, do you have your outfit? I mean, I assume you have your outfit with you, you know. But this isn't right. No, this is not Hunter S. Thompson. This would be a terrible <laughs> Hunter S. Thompson. This would be horrifying. It's a bad costume party. <laughs> <laughs> is that it? It's just like, listen, come up with a costume and then botch it horrifyingly. Yeah, just go do it. Exactly. And then say what you were supposed to be. That would be awesome. You just dress normally, and then you're like, oh, yeah. me, I'm Spiro Agnew. I'm doing that next year if you want to. Really? I just decided right this now. This shitty costume party. Yeah. You should do it uh, like not on Halloween though. It should be like, <laughs> exactly. No, it should be, summer doesn't have any good holidays. I mean, they have like, like 4th of July, Memorial Day, but like there's not a, a big, you know, like gala event. So there needs to be like national shitty costume day. I'm saying, then holiday. You, fuck the nation. I'm saying you just go, you roll this by yourself. Thing. Yes. You roll by yourself, shitty costume day. Guys, let's there we go. Let's go ahead and find out. Are you guys down for shitty costume day? Let's get some day recommendations. You know, this is just gonna wind up being me sitting at home going like, Oh hey, I'm Princess Leia. Oh like, fuck in my no. bathroom. No, no. I mean, listen, it could. Sure. <laughs> Choose your own adventure. It could be anything. Uh April second, maybe. April second, so, that's the day before my birthday. Oh so, shit, son. Well why don't we just make it April third? How do you guys feel about October 31st? I, no. Do you got smart asses in here? Or? Yes, a lot of smart I'm asses. I'm sorry, I just insulted your audience. No, 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 I do it all, all the time. Listen, it's a, it's a, a party is, <laughs> is invading my room. Uh, <laughs> He's going as Batman, by the way. That's a great, that's a great SE costume. I don't know if, it's, if it's I can... It's bat country. <laughs> you can't stop here. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, we're clever. There we go. Here, let's. I don't know if you want to show the the T Rex. Is, is oh God, can he be on the live internet. stream? Look at that. <laughs> he's he's like, what's what's going on? He is flying through the eye, uh, flying through the sky. So fancy free. That's right. Uh, well, there we go. I'll tell you what, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this has been a, a thunderous, cake-filled <laughs> end 
to to the live stream. Thank you to everybody who came out and and and, and watched. Uh, I'll tell you what, I, I'm going to be doing more live streams throughout the week because uh, I, I got a couple of new ideas for some of the podcasts that I do. But until next time, folks, please don't die. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. Let me play the out song. Where's the out song? Do do do. Here we go.